that was me. <laughs> Singing in a band a long time ago now. I was a very angry young woman. <laughs> and at the time, that was what I needed to do. In the mid-80s, I experienced a series of extremely traumatic events over two years that resulted in complex PTSD. My whole life was turned upside down and I made a drastic decision. I decided to run away to New Zealand from Australia. <laughs> Suddenly though, I was alone in a new country. I was stretched to the max. I was overwhelmed. I even collapsed. Anxiety had come to visit and I was getting all sorts of weird pains. So, I went to the library and I did something that I kept secret at the time. I read self-help books. <laughs> I found a book that told me the secret to being happy is to do the things you love. And this just kept playing through my mind. The secret to being happy is to do the things you love. And it still plays through my mind to this day. When I arrived in New Zealand, I just enrolled in a PhD in agricultural science because that was the career path I was on. But unfortunately, it seemed meaningless. I spent a lot of time in the lab and the glass house doing repetitive tasks. And this was not good for my state of mind. I was struggling to relate to my scientist peers and I realised that I needed to completely change my life. Then, in 1987, I met Jeremy Von Cobra. He said, can you sing? I said, sure. I lied. The next thing you know, I'm singing in a band. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. But hey, I got to loop around on stage, singing out messages that I wanted everybody to hear. And it was great. It was like therapy. And I met lots of really wonderful people who also shared their experiences with me. I found happiness at last. So, let's find out about creativity and well-being. There was a study in 2016 by Dr. Tamlin Connor, who's a psychologist, and she found out there's a very strong connection between creative activities and well-being. And that this didn't just apply to creative professionals and artists, it also applied to people with hobbies, including crafting and getting creative in the kitchen. Turns out that three things are the keys to these creative benefits. Openness, curiosity, and playfulness, something I'm very good at, it would seem. And I wonder how this works. So, it's now very well known that creative expression lowers stress and anxiety, helps to build your resilience, and lowers your body's cortisol levels. So what is cortisol? It's a steroid hormone that's pumped all around your body, in your blood, and most of the time, Cortisol is your friend. It helps to control your blood sugar levels, it regulates your metabolism, it reduces inflammation, and also, ironically, this is the way I get stuck, it helps to assist with memory function. And, unfortunately, it's also your main stress hormone. It's your body's alarm system. It affects your brain, controls your mood, your motivation, and fear. And if you leave your cortisol levels high, you can get all sorts of health problems, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and depression. And if you ignore that, it can actually kill you. So let's remember the three creative things that are good to lower your stress and your cortisol. That would be openness, curiosity, and playfulness. So let's start with openness. 
I didn't actually realise it at the time, by doing the things I love, which is what I decided to do after I read that book, that I was actually doing these three things and reducing my cortisol levels. I made myself completely open to the world, completely open to new experiences. After singing in my first band, I took up playing bass guitar and learning the drums and playing in all sorts of bands. Then I quit being a scientist, which was a big move, and I got a meaningful job working in a music centre for at-risk youth. Then I thought, I'm going to move to New York, why not? So, in 1996 I did. I got a job managing a dance company. I ended up playing drums in an improvised band. I met all these incredibly creative people. And they inspired me so much. And this is where the second key to happiness kicked in. Curiosity. So I started thinking about how to be truly curious and creative. Then it was time to come back home. I moved back to Perth, but I kept working in the arts and playing drums and bands, occasionally singing, doing stand-up poetry. Oh, I'll try anything once. Um, and then I ended up working in a science museum which seemed the perfect job for me. I finally found my real career. And I um, was doing some research for my job, and I came across the BBC Radiophonic Workshops. You may or may not have heard of that, but let me give you a hint. Delia Derbyshire, she's synonymous with the Doctor Who theme song. OK, so now you know what I'm talking about. All right, and another woman who worked there, Daphne Oram. Now, just to add to my list of things I've done, when I was in New Zealand, I also became a sound engineer. And I learned all these different skills. And when I found out about Daphne Oram and Delia Derbyshire, honestly, they just they blew my mind. And I have a quote from Daphne Oram which I want to share with you. It's quite long but it's worth listening to. You take a sound, any sound, record it, then change it by a multiplicity of operations. You record it at different speeds, play it backwards. You add it to itself over and over again. You adjust filters, echoes and acoustic qualities. You produce a vast and subtle symphony. It's sort of a modern magic. We think there's something in it. Some musicians believe that it may become an art form in its own right. This just, boom, my brain just went off and I decided that I wanted to be that musician who turned sound into art. Once again, had absolutely no idea what I was doing, but I thought, hey, I used to be a plant scientist. Why don't I try to make music out of a plant? So I did. I tried. I tried to make a speaker out of a plant. Huge failure. <laughs> That's OK, though, because failures are good. You learn things. And you know, for me, it's the process that matters. It's not necessarily the final result that I really care about. And um, I was feeling a bit dejected, though. I will admit that. So I decided to take my dog, Trevor, for a walk in the park. And I do sound walks as meditations. You should try it sometime if you've never given it a go. Anyway, taking my dog Trevor, I drag him along. He doesn't really like to walk very much. He's a sausage dog, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am doing, trying to do my meditation, dragging the dog. And I, it was very windy, and I could hear the sounds of the winds in the trees. And then I started really listening. And I noticed that the gum tree over here sounded completely different to the she oak tree over here. And in actual fact, the she oak tree was extremely eerie. So, as you do, I picked some leaves, took them home, looked at them under the microscope, and I could see that the structures of the leaves were very unusual. This got me thinking about why that would affect the sound, and maybe I could have a look at other leaves with different sounds and see what they look like. So 
So playfulness kicked in here. So that's the third key to happiness, playfulness. So I started going crazy, collecting all these different plants and discovered all these different structures on the leaves. For a lot of them are adaptations, actually. We won't go into that. That's a whole other TED talk. Um, and as I was looking at all these leaves and thinking, oh, how am I going to turn this into a musical instrument? I thought I was going to have to buy some really fancy, expensive equipment. But no, I discovered that all I needed was one of these. This is a contact microphone. Contact microphones pick up vibrations from solid objects. And this took the sounds of the leaves and made them very loud so you could hear it. So then I started wondering, hmm, I wonder what else I could turn into a musical instrument. So, how about a slinky? Or a box? And something that's hidden under here, which we'll find out about later. And this got me trying out lots of different things, and then I realised that I could turn so many different things into musical instruments. And anything that had a good vibration. And all this playfulness gave me so much joy. I just felt so happy. Now, getting back to the story up at the beginning, let's think about why does all this matter? So a number of times in my life, I've found my mind going back into a bad place. And I have to re-examine what I'm doing with my time. I have to make sure that I'm doing the things I love and that I am being open, curious and playful. Because that's what I need to do. But last year, I have to admit, I really struggled. It was really hard to get motivated to do anything. I ended up forcing myself to make music. And as soon as I did that, it kicked out of the hormonal reward systems in my brain and I've been making heaps of music since, exploring new ideas, and I've gotten into recording birds. Now, my takeaway message to you is that it's very, very important to make time to do a creative hobby that you enjoy. You don't have to be good at it. You don't have to be practised or skilled. You just need to have a go. And now I'm going to show you where my creative happiness journey has taken me. I'm going to start with the leaves. 